Okay, this next question, this is from Jade Twiler 77 What are some of the most underrated pens? We get asked this from time to time, Drew, and I think it changes constantly because you can have an underrated pen and then we talk about it being underrated and then people get experience with it and it becomes rated or overrated. Yeah. And then it's no longer an underrated pen. So it's something we got to revisit every now and then. So what do you think are some underrated pens du jour? Well, right now I'm a little biased on this first one because it's on my wish list right now. And that is the Ooh. Caveco Supra. And I really mm-hmm. want one because I think it's fun. It There's nothing else like it. You, you can basically change it from a full-size pen to a pocket pen. And there's no other pen that does that. I mean, other than just like capped versus uncapped. This one's different because it actually segments. So yeah. I think that's underrated. I think it's a, it's a practical design. I think that it does something that no other pen does and i think it should be recognized Mm. for it and i feel like it flies under the radar sometimes Um, now question for you drew when you think because i'm I'm curious how you interpret the word underrated do you think underrated is something that like most people just aren't aware of and maybe should get attention or do you think it's something that people are aware of but maybe has features that you don't think are appreciated as much or maybe it doesn't have the reputation that you feel that it should as opposed to just being like unknown all of the above i think it depends on what it's being compared to like i think that if you're comparing like you know the lord of the rings movies and you say fellowship is underrated you could you know like obviously fellowship of the ring is one of the most famous movies of all time but when Mm. you're comparing it to even more popular famous movies and you think just because the first one's boring it's underrated there's an mm. argument to be made there. So at that point, there's nothing unknown about it, but comparatively, it's underrated. Um, okay. They're like, so ba- the third, they're like the third Expendables is underrated compared to the other. No, the, right? third, the third Expendables is rated. It is just as, it is, <laughs> no, that, you can skip that one. But, what about the third Godfather movie? Do you think that one is underrated? Ooh, no, I think that is also still as bad as everybody thinks it is. <laughs> I, I never saw the director's cut, but I mentioned it once on the pencast, and pretty much everybody in the comments was like, no, Drew, you're fine. You can leave it alone. <laughs> I was like, oh, so it's, man. So it's, so it's rated. It's just rated. Yeah, I think that was okay. rated. But Fair the enough. Supra, in my opinion, should be among Caveco's most popular pens, and it's not. So It, that, is, a, that, it is a super cool pen, I yeah. will admit. So yeah. I, I think that they should be talking with that one just as much as they talk about you know the sport and the Lilliput. I think it's um, the price. You know, I think it just, it's so much more expensive and it's got a number six nib where very, very few Quakos do. But so it's I th- better. I, just, I think so, but I think it's just not what they're known for. Yeah. So I think it's just kind of outside their kind of typical thing. It is. You know? It is. I think you're right. Um, another underrated brand that um, I normally wouldn't wouldn't get my hands on, but I did and I was pleased with it is mm. Yooker's. And Yooker's is... Yooker's? Yooker's? Yeah. You, 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 cares. You, Yooker's? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, so Yooker's makes um, fiber-tipped pens. Um, they're not exactly felt because they're pretty darn plasticky and hard. Yeah. Um, we've, but we've, it, asked, but, we've asked them what that's made of, and they said it's made of yook. It's the yook. It's the yook. <laughs> Which but is it is it is kind of, porous, kind so of a, I mean it's kind of a joke, yeah. But it's it's uh, a very it's, very rigid fiber tip, so it's it's more durable than a fiber tip because your typical very. fiber tip, I think about like the Sharpie pen, right? Like that, if you push on it really hard, it's gonna like kind of crush and get all flat right. and spread out, and then you're lost. No, this one, I literally t- in testing one of these, I dropped it on my desk to see what would happen. It just got shoved up on uh, shoved up into the pen. Oh, so um, I've bent it before, but it it doesn't like split apart like a fiber tip will. No. It just uh, or like a felt tip, it will just kind of like bend. Yeah. So it's like it's almost like a it's almost like a plastic rod, but yet things flow through it. I but it's genuinely porous. don't yeah. know how it works. Yeah. But it's effective. It works. It doesn't dry out super bad. I, I've used it with Bay State Blue in testing it. Like the mm. replacements are pretty affordable. So I think that that pen doesn't get, you know, it's not unpopular. I think it was actually surprisingly popular when we first picked them up. But um, yeah, I, yeah, I would say that Yooker's falls into that category of being a little underrated. That's a good one. Do you consider that one a go to non fountain pen, Drew? It I, has not. Honest- it has I legitimately been, kind of forgot about that pen when, when we had the right? previous question. There you go. So, no, for me, it has not been a go-to simply because I dropped it, nib, yook down, and <laughs> shoved it into the back of the pen. So um, You can get a new tip, Drew. I know. I need to get a new tip. I'm waiting. They're available waiting online that. at gulaypens.com. <laughs> you don't say. Hmm. 
Um, and then my third, surprisingly affordable, cheaper than a nib. Anyway, absolutely. <laughs> uh, my third one, and that that's my my pick is the uh, Yuker's Metis, not not the Youth. I'm not a big fan of the Youth. They're too plastic. Yeah, the Youth me. is not very popular. It's no. the the Metis is the one yeah. that's that's Metis. the one that sells. Anyway, Metis. Um, the Maybe it's Sa- Metis. I don't know. The Yuker's Metis. Matisse. My third and final is the Sailor High Ace Neo. And at $20, mm. this is a great alternative to the Pilot Parallel if you're looking for an affordable stub, stub, stubby pen. You know, we're talking like calligraphy nib on these things. Yeah. They're much more, um, I guess, aesthetically pleasing than the Parallel. Now, I love the Parallel, and I think I, I like the Parallel better than these. Well, but I mean, that's a matter of opinion, Drew. Well, I mean... The, they, I'm just kidding. The, these could, these like, can go in a traditional pen case, or yeah. they can clip inside of your shirt. In which case, the you know the, the parallel has a cannot. clip. Yeah, yeah. It's got, it's, not this weird like wave. It's a normal looking thing. fountain pen. And yeah. Okay. It's twenty bucks. It comes with everything you need to get started, and you can write with a you know big old one point five or even larger. So if you mm-hmm. wanted to do just some fun you know holiday cards or something like that, this is a great option for you. So. I yeah. and it, they write really, really smoothly as well. So I love these pens, and one. I don't think they get enough love. Fair enough. The highest Neo is like a relatively newer addition to us because we only started carrying Sailor last year, and it's all been, you know, during pandemic time. So we haven't really been able to put like a lot of muster behind the highest Neo, but it's a very solid performing pen. Pretty pleased. Did you so. say muster or mustard? Muster. muster. Mustard. We, okay, gotcha. We okay. also have not put mustard behind it, so <laughs> really either one applies. But mustard was the one that I was. Uh, See, I often say, to say. I often use that slang. Uh, it's uh, when we, when my brother had Madden two thousand two or something like that. Um, the announcer, I'm guessing John Madden, if you if you threw a pass and it was too long or something, he said like, oh, he put a little too much mustard on that one. And I'm like, <laughs> well, okay. So now That's whenever. Pretty funny. That's Whenever, probably what that, yeah, it's probably a play on words a little bit there. Maybe. Or maybe he meant to say muster and I just misheard it and I've been saying mustard all my life. Or, anyway. Hmm. What are you what are your underrated fountain pens or pens, Brian? Yeah, so uh well I guess it, the question was not specific to fountain pens, but I I don't think that any non fountain pen is underrated because I think they all come below fountain pens. But um uh, the Traveler's Brass Pen was on my list. That was my carry-around pen for this past week, so I won't spoil that too much because I do want to talk about it more. Um, but that is one that uh, I'm a big fan of. I, I fell in love with it as soon as it came out, carried it around for quite a bit, um, and it's a uh, very solid performing pen. I think it's it's great. I'm a big fan of it. You know, and, uh, that always surprised me, given the fact that you generally find larger pens more appealing. Absolutely. I'll explain myself okay. more I, I when would we like get to know into what, the review. I would like to know what drew you to this pen so quickly. Because I remember when it came mm-hmm. out, you were like, I need one of these. Oh, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay, okay. I'm we'll eager to there. learn more. We'll Continue. get there. Um, yeah. The Platinum Profonte in Plazier. I think basically any Platinum Preppy kind of upgrade pen. You know, it's like they, they don't sell anywhere near what the Preppy does. They nope. barely get the same love. Granted, okay, yes, the converter is kind of pricey, and I think that's kind of, you know, crazy a little bit. But the Profonte, you can convert to an eyedropper, just like a Preppy. So you got that option, and so it's still very affordable even without the converter. Or you can just refill cartridges. Those Platinum cartridges are, like, friggin' thick. I mean, they will not wear out anytime soon. So they work really well just for refilling with a syringe. And they're pretty good in capacity, too. So that's a good option as well. Um, the Plazier, okay, I can understand that's not everybody's taste, but you get some of those like ombre ones that came out, they look really good. And I just, I don't know. I just, I definitely feel like the Plazier has never gotten the love that I would have thought. Cause when you look at other pens in that like $20 price range, like what else are you getting? You know, there's some good ones, but like, there's a lot of stuff that's just not nearly as nice looking, not nearly as well built. And that's such a solid writing thing. I think it's because it's got the same guts as the preppy that everybody looks at a plazier and they're like $20 for a dressed up preppy, you know, but I'm like, okay, if you can, you know, like get that thought out of your head, you're actually getting a pretty decent pen. So, um, you know, I think it's worth a second look. Um, the pilot explorer, that one often gets overlooked as well. That one can fit a con 70. You can eyedropper it. It gets a big in capacity. It is a little light, so I will say if you prefer heavier pens, it can feel cheap in your hand. That I do understand. I think that's pretty accurate in terms of how people feel. 
but it's a relatively affordable pen. And I think it's a good alternative if you don't want something as metal and kind of heavy as a Metropolitan, you're still getting the same nib and great writing capability with an even greater ink capacity in the Explorer. So I don't think that one gets enough love. And they got some cool colors. Uh, the Pilot Varsity does get some love, but I don't think it gets nearly enough love as it should, given how inexpensive that it is. It actually can be refilled. It's meant to be kind of a disposable pen, but you can basically just rip the guts right out of the thing. You can just kind of grab the nib and like yank it right out and it'll pull that whole feed and everything right out and you can refill. It's basically just an eyedropper pen. So you can actually kind of clean off that that section there. It's like a, it's like a wick feed, you know, uh, that... So it's a little unconventional, but it's like under four bucks. And, and the nib itself is so smooth. It's a little springy, like it's actually a great writing experience. So the fact that you can, you know, use it disposable if you want to, but then you can refill it and basically, you know, keep on using it. It's a, such a great pen. I'm surprised that it's just not recommended as like more of a go-to starter pen. Um, and then the last one I have, this one does get some love. I debate about saying whether this was underrated or not, but I still probably feel like it doesn't get as much love as it should, the Pilot E95S. So it's a one of the most affordable gold nib pens out there. Very cool form factor. The feel that you get, if you like, and Drew, you and I both have like that enjoyment of the tactile feel of just a nice cap, like the the how smoothly that cap just slides on and off that pen it's like nothing else. It's not a, it's different than like the arrow. It's not like this snap thing. It's like this glide on and then it just kind of like comes to a nice stop. It doesn't have like a snap or anything like that. It's just, but it's got this nice long travel. I'm a huge fan of that. Um, and the nib itself writes great. It's got some line variation to it, a little bit of flex. So I think that it's still just like not on most people's radar. It's got this like vintage kind of look to it. So E95S, I'm, I'm very much a fan. Dang it, Brian. Now I want that one too. <laughs> it's the, that, or it's it's the, it's the Supra and that one now. I like that, those. That maroon, that maroon and ivory. I like, would get that one. I wouldn't. Trim. I wouldn't get oh, the black it's... one. I would get the maroon and ivory. That's the one I chose because I was like, yeah. okay, the black one does look good. Normally not. I'm not like usually in love with like black with gold trim because it's just so done. But that one, the trim is a little bit different. It's got like some more like pinstriping type trim on it. Um, it does look classy, but that ivory and maroon just stands out. And it looks absolutely. So, it just looks so good. Big fan, big fan. I really wish Pilot would bring back something in that form factor. You know, if mm. like either another E95S or another pen that has that look kind of like, you know, the, mm. uh, the, like the M M90. M90. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, something they like definitely that. Definitely bring back the M90. Or, or some, something in that realm. It doesn't have to be, you know, the the yeah. the, bo the um, full body nib or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But s something with that form factor. I think that there's yeah, there's it's like that people that it's would like appreciate that, that pocket pen. Well, they had like the Stargazer. You know, that was a smaller pen, but that was. Oh, a I want different. one of those too. God, I know, I know. They discontinued those. We, I know. I, I wish we could still sell them. They were the Stargazer was another one I would have said was underrated back in the day. They it were was. okay. They were never I love that the Stargazer. popular. They were good looking pens though. And those capped really nicely as well. Those caps. Mm, talk about good snap caps. That Stargazer was pretty delightful. Choice. Pilots got some good snap caps. They do. Say that. Anyway, the Prera. That's a good cap. Mm. Mm. That's pretty good. Anyway.